Good afternoon and thanks for joining us here on Midday Live. I am Wendy Lai. Coming up this afternoon. Former Minister in Charge of Tertiary Education, Elizabeth Ohene, calls for immediate relocation of communities within Kalapa Game Reserve to save it from wanton destruction. And on the international front, U.S. imposes fresh tariffs of 112 billion U.S. dollars of Chinese imported goods. This is Midday Live. Let's start now. And the name of the 99-year-old retired expatriate Navy officer Rufus Martin, who was granted Guinean citizenship in fulfillment of his long cherished dream, has been dedicated to the Asankofa Memorial Wall at the AU Diaspora Africa Forum. Now, the Memorial Wall signifies the representation of diasporans who lived the dreams of their forefathers. Sarah Park, who witnessed the event and has come through with the following report. Rufus Martin died a day after his greatest wish of becoming a Ghanaian citizen was granted. It was barely three months ago when he cheerfully danced at his 99th birthday celebration at his residence in Akwemufie in the Eastern region. Rufus was convinced that his great-grandfather, Jake Kane, was among the slaves that were transported to Europe, hence relocating to Ghana in pursuance of his ancestral lineage. His family successfully organized a conference ceremony for him while he laid on his sick bed. But he couldn't live longer to enjoy the achievement. His remains have been incremented according to his belief. The head of the Diaspora African Forum, Ambassador Dr. Erica Bennett, was thankful to government for the support. His nephew, Norman Edwards, says he will continue whatever his uncle has started here in Ghana. I would simply say this, that I will pursue that last task that he started on, and that was to build a library. A trip to Africa turned his life around, that in his age 90s, he decided I'm moving. And by 93, he had a house and he was here. So I don't know too many 90-year-olds that make an effort to do so. But um, he found the energy, he found the, the warmth. So I want to keep that legacy of what he accomplished visible for others to understand. The ceremony was graced by close friends and family of the late Rufus Martin. And so rest in peace. Now to one of our headline stories and former minister in charge of tertiary education, Elizabeth Ohene, has called for immediate relocation of communities right inside the Kalapa Game Reserve to save it from wanton destruction. She made the call during a tour of the reserve. Robert Abilba has filed this report. Despite the ban on logging and exportation of rosewood trees in the country early this year, there is still intense logging and destruction of rosewood ongoing in the Kalapa Forest Reserve. Thus, the chiefs and people of Abutia and Adaklu have attributed to some five communities located in the middle of the reserve since government took over management of the forest reserve many decades back. At an emergency meeting of Volta Regional Security Council, RESEC, authorities of Game and Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission denied the claims of the chiefs. Former Minister in Charge of Tertiary Education, Elizabeth Ohene, who is also a native of Abutia, during a tour observed the reserve is losing its natural resources due to human activities. The whole point of a forest reserve is that You've reserved it to be outside human settlement. Those who have a commercial interest in the rosewood and other trees have discovered that when they want to farm, they have to cut down trees before they can farm. Those who live inside the forest should be moved. I don't think the park rangers can do very much. A divisional chief of Abutia Chloe, Tobi Kwami Ayipi, also called for immediate action to be taken to salvage the reserve from destruction. There were attempts to relocate them from the, from the reserve. Over 
so many years now. They are still there. And if you should go and see what what the activities there, it's not nice. It, the government has to do something about it. Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, Agra, in collaboration with the Forestry Commission and Dominifert, a fertilizer blending company, are jointly undertaking tree planting at the Wager Dam to prevent the construction of buildings along the dam. The exercise is a prelude to the 2019 edition of the Africa Green Revolution Forum to be held in Accra. The exercise also forms part of preventive measures to ensure people do not encroach on the Wager Dam and other government property. The essence is to protect the Dinsu water basin. It is the sole water that supplies the whole of the western of Accra. So we want to help maintain the volume of the water to the extent that uh, we can continue doing its work. Agra is partnering the Forestry Commission to help reduce erosion increase soil fertility, lower water tables, and help stabilize water supplies. They have a mandate under the AFRI 100 to do 150,000 hectares, which translates to about 180 million seedlings every year. So they need support from all of us so that we can let them achieve the target of planting 2 million hectares. The team for this year's celebration is Grow Digital, leveraging digital transformation to drive sustainable food systems in Africa. The chief executive of the Forestry Commission, Kwejo Owusu Ifriye, has warned staff of the Forest Resources Division against low productivity. He maintained there would be justification for the huge investment in the sector if the output of those taxed to ensure returns cannot be quantified. He was addressing some districts and regional accountants on the Forest Investment Program here in Accra. The Forest Investment Program, FIP, is a targeted program under the Strategic Climate Fund of the Climate Investment Fund. It is to finance countries' specific efforts to address the underlying causes of deforestation and forest degradation and to overcome barriers that have hindered past efforts. Ghana was among eight countries selected to pilot the project in March 2010. Ghana's investment plan was approved in November 2012, leading to a $50 million funding. The African Development Bank gave additional $5 million grant to support the project. By the implementation process in the high forest zone of the Western and the Brongahaf region is challenged due to the absence of dedicated data system to effectively manage and report on work done. The additional intervention from the African Development Bank is to address the challenges and improve on reporting. Monies that come to us must be properly be, be, be accounted for and the returns submitted. And I hope that once you have this, we will not come back tomorrow to complain that we, did, we were not able to return the, 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 the figures because we did not have no laptops. Chief Executive of the Forestry Commission, Kojo Usafi, further warned against slow productivity. We will not take any mediocrity in terms of in the job that we are undertaking. Because some of the monies that come to us are time bound. If indeed we are not able to utilize the resources that is given to us, they go back. This FIP program is very, very dear to the heart of Forest Commission, to the ministry, and to government. And therefore, monies that come to us must be properly be, be, be accounted for and the returns submitted. <laughs> You're still watching Media Live. Let's move on to some more stories. And Chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Foreign Affairs, Frank Anodompre, has encouraged African governments to play a leading role in climate change. Speaking in Accra at a two-day conference on nationally determined contributions on climate change and energy dynamics in West Africa, the Nsawo Madweji, Member of Parliament, noted climate issues are mostly relegated to the background. Nationally determined contributions NDCs are outcome of the Paris Agreement in 2015. It enjoined all parties to outline individual countries' mitigation measures 
and to effectively adapt to the impact of climate change with implementation commencing in 2020. The actions are aimed at reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. The Accra Conference, which was on the theme Nationally Determined Contributions, Climate Change and Energy Dynamics in West Africa, was aimed at assessing the current situation and efforts on the commitment on the country's NDCs as well as related challenges regarding energy and climate change. The conference, organized by Conrad Adner Stiftang and Institute of Green Growth Solutions, brought together policymakers, experts, energy sector players to exchange knowledge, discuss and formulate answers to the questions on climate change. It provided evidence-based fact and implementable strategies to balance energy production and consumption. Member of Parliament for Nsewo Madreji, Frank Anodompre, urged the continent to pay more attention to climate change. We tend to relegate climate change issues to the background because we think they are not bread and butter issues. But I differ. Climate change and energy issues are so critical that any leadership or any leader who tends to gross over it is either the person is acting of, out of ignorance or the person is doing it with mischief. We need to show more leadership. Adiyibi Adiola of the ECOWA Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency noted various African governments are very committed to the agenda. They need a lot of support for implementation. They are willing and they are ready. The governments are willing and ready to implement NDCs. But the key issue now is the right partnerships to help to push this uh, strategy documents into actionable uh, projects on the ground. CEO of KYA Energy Group of Togo, Professor Yawo Azuma, noted private sector participation is critical in financing the nationally determined contributions and their success. If we want to take the old way of financing this new project, we can't achieve our goals because uh, we are poor countries, by the way. We need the private sector to, to uh, involve in all these projects to make sure that they will be sustainable. As part of the conference, participants visited the sewage systems Ghana Limited facility located at New Lavender Hill, which is used for the treatment of liquid waste. Ghana's nationally determined contributions are in sync with its short, medium and long-term development plans. The country has put forward 31 mitigation and adaptation actions in its nationally determined contributions, made up of 20 mitigation and 11 adaptation actions in seven priority sectors, which will be implemented in a 10-year period from 2020 to 2030. Let's now focus on agriculture and the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, has urged Ghana to build the capacity of all industry players in the agriculture sector. FAO Assistant Director General and Regional Representative for Africa, Dr. Abebe Haile Gibril, maintained improving the capacity and skills of people will improve yield and reduce post-harvest losses. Dr. Abebe Hale Gabriel gave the advice when he presented fall armyworm educational and other material to the Ministry of Agriculture in Accra. When the institution's capacities are strengthened, when people's capacity and skills are improved, then it means we will have better seeds for planting plants protected from attacks by pests such as the fall armyworm, for example. And this is part of also employment, employment creation for the youth. Ghana suffered one of the worst worm invasion between 2016 and 2017 following the infestation of fall armyworm. The insects destroyed varying crop species, including maize, rice, sorghum, millet, sugarcane, vegetables and cotton, mainly in the northern sector of the country. The slow fight against the devastating worm was blamed partly on the lack of skills and expertise in the country. Since then, the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, has been supporting the country to deal with the threat. And now they are topping it up with more materials for fall armyworm. And uh, they have also surprised us with some items to ensure that we 
control the quality of our seas. So I would like to say a very big thank you to FAO and I promise them that we will put all this into good use. The recent support formed part of efforts to strengthen capacity of both agri extension officers and other stakeholders in the fight against armyworm. And that is why we appealed to bodies outside government if they could assist, particularly the international development organizations. And the FAO is one of those that have responded to our call by bringing us equipment and laboratory reagents and even to protect from army worm attack and whatnot. And that is what we are seeing today. Items presented include information and education materials, digital cameras, Wellington boots, mouth and nose guards. In other news, Ghana has established over 40 community resources management area creamers in four regions. 30 out of over 40 of such facilities have received final certification of devolution from the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. Deputy CEO of the Forestry Commission, John Alote, explained the move is to help protect biodiversity. The decline of wildlife in Ghana is attributed to the high demand for bushmeat and continuous diminution of wildlife habitat. 75% of the Ghanaian population depends largely on wildlife for animal protein. Annual volume of bushmeat harvested by hunters in Ghana is estimated at 384,991.8 tons, worth $350 million, while total annual bushmeat consumption is estimated at 225.287 tons, valued at $205 million. The Kumasi Central Market alone accounted for more than 3,500 carcasses in a month. These demands have made the protection of the forest and wildlife a daunting task for state officials. The challenge has led to the need for devolution of power to enable local authorities in rural areas fully monitor and arrest those involved in the act. The Community Resources Management Area, CRIMA, is therefore meant to give recognition to the devolution of such powers. That involves natural resource governance and management responsibility and authority to the consistent communities that have agreed to contribute their land to the agreement and participate in shared decision making with respect to resource use within the agreement boundaries to obtain direct benefits. Ghana has since established over 40 centers located within 26 districts across four regions. The CREMA mechanism is an innovative transformed into communally owned formidable structure and process of managing African natural resources for reducing emissions due to deforestation and forest degradation. The success story attracted the attention of Liberian Forestry Development Authority and West Africa Biodiversity and Climate Change, WABIC. They are best striving to involve community members in managing our natural resources. This trip is seen as one that will hopefully help us, the participants, to learn some new models that will help us keep our primary forest. A director at the Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission, Dr. Andrews Che Ejari, explained the importance of devolution of authority. What basically it tries to do is to try and then balance conservation of natural resources and sustainable livelihoods so that people can you know, benefit directly from natural resource conservation and all that. Dr. Andrews Che Ejari, however, says the various communities should voluntarily embrace the initiative in order to fast-track the protection of biodiversity. To some other stories, an interior minister, Ambrose Derry, has come to the defense of a plea of accusations of being selective in criminal investigations. Addressing the opening session of the Regional Commanders Conference in Sugakope, he blamed the public for lack of information to the police, insisting that successful investigations are possible based on credible and timely information. The Ghana Police Service, particularly the Criminal Investigations Department, has been under constant criticism of a perceived poor approach towards criminal investigations. 
A section of the public are of the view the police only attach seriousness and importance to issues that relate to them directly or linked to people in power or authority. A recent reference is of the unresolved investigations into the Takradi kidnapped girls case after more than a year. But the sector minister, Ambrose Derry, says that police cannot be blamed for any lapses in their investigations. I've heard people make baseless accusations that the police discriminate between cases, that in some cases we get results, in other cases we do not get results. Let me let all citizens know that the cases that we get results, we get information, credible information, on time. And if we get it on time, we will be able to deliver. The Interior Minister, however, charged them to rededicate themselves to their duties and responsibilities. I know that without discipline, nothing good can be achieved. And effective supervision is needed to keep your activities on course to achieve your set goals. I entreat all of you to be resolute in the discharge of your duty, to ensure peace, full and safer communities in Ghana. The National Command Conference was on the theme Strengthening Discipline and Supervision for Effective Crime Control. We therefore in leadership have to up our game in terms of matters relating to the welfare of our personnel. Indeed, we cannot behave like the proverbial ostrich and pretend that all is well. This requires leadership to work collectively to urgently address this unbecoming conduct on our own part as supervisors and among some of our junior officers to redeem the image of our service. It attracted regional commanders from the 17 policing regions as well as commanders of sister security agencies in the Volta region. The United Nations is seeking the deployment of more police peacekeepers from the Ghana Police Service. United Nations advisor on police in Louis Calaro made the request when he called on the police administration in Accra as part of his working visit to Ghana. The Ghana Police Service's participation in international peacekeeping dates back to 1960 in Congo. Over the decades, the service continues to deploy troops and individual police personnel for varying duties across the world on either United Nations continental or regional peacekeeping operations. And recently, I had the chance also to visit in South Sudan, uh, but also in the Darfur, the Ghana police and I can uh, give public testimony of the excellent work that Ghana police do for the people on the ground. The United Nations advisor on policing, Luis Carrillo, further appealed to Ghana's police administration for more truth, particularly women. Female police officers are in high demand in peace operations and I also made a plea to the Inspector General of Police and to all the leadership to continue to deploy uh, excellent police officers for uh, peace operations, particularly female police officers, at uh, the different types of engagement. The acting Inspector General of Police, James Opon Buenu, welcomed the call and pledged their readiness to support the world body. If you have a lot more women in deployment, the women police officers are able to deal with women victims than men are able to do that. And Ghana has been one of the countries that has deployed more female police officers in the missions. So I believe the request is in order and um, we are prepared to deploy more women into the missions. We train our women alongside the men and I can assure you that the police women are very competent. But how would the continuous deployment of troops on international duties impact on domestic policing? Balance your operational men, you balance all the administrative officers, you balance all your personnel. And if you see that your deployment will impact negatively on your operations at home, you will not deploy. But I can assure you that if we deploy, we, we always look at it before we deploy. So it will not have any negative impact on our deployment at home. Carillo was accompanied by the Chief of Selection and Recruitment Section, Police Division, Department of Peace Operations at the United Nations, Ata Yuningun. 
and some exciting news, uh, quite short though, by the Western Trade Fair organized by Connect FM, a subsidiary of Media General ends today. So if you haven't been there, it's happening at the Takwadi Mall. We'll cross over shortly, but then we'll take a breather. Do stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. You're still watching Midday Live with me, Wendy Lai. The Industrial and Commercial Workers Union is demanding heads of MMDA's Metropolitan Municipal District Assemblies to negotiate with them on determining taxes and levies for hairdressers and beauticians. ICU says they form the informal sector, contributing heavily to national development. Addressing the 6th Quadrennial Delegates Conference of the Ghana Hairdressers and Beautician Association, the Deputy General Secretary Morgan Ayawine said, ICU will champion goals of the association, especially negotiating with MMDAs on new taxes for the association. We are calling on government through the appropriate you know, sector ministries to deal with this problem of uh, the assemblies fixing uh, taxes and fees on behalf of our members. Fees which levels are too high for our members to pay. Over 100 members of the association gathered for the conference. The association over the past 47 years has impacted positively to society. The national president, Elizabeth Bosman, was hopeful that their contributions to the economy was not in doubt. From now on, our attitude towards our clients should not be business as usual. Rather, we should be innovating, polite, respectful and focused. Regional President Felicia Kwating called for more collaboration to achieve goals of the association. And let's head to the Western region now. I early on mentioned that the Western Trade Fair organized by Connect FM, a subsidiary of Media General, ends today, September 1. The fair, which is taking place at the Takrade Mall car park, has drawn over 500 patrons since it began last week. We'll shortly cross over to our correspondent, Eric Ejie, who is at the fairgrounds for some more updates. Western Trade Fair is currently ongoing. We are still interacting with some of the exhibitors to get to know them better. Good afternoon, welcome to TV3. Good afternoon. What's the name of your stand? Abidan Collections. Abidan Collections? Yes. So, so what do you do? We are into fascinators and then uh, things that a bride will need. Uh -huh. Okay, and so where can you be located? Um, we are just behind Event Factory, Tadisco Down. Okay. And your contact? Uh, 0242 777055. 0242-777055. Okay. Thank you very much. So we are still here at the Western Trade Fair and we'll keep interacting with some of the exhibitors. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. So what's the name of your shop? We are Dress Up GH. What do you do? Uh, we do fashion glam, that is we sew for men and women, we are promoting more of our senator wears, we also sew for women as well. We are also running a professional fashion training school, okay, so one where of can, a kind in Takrade. Where can you be located? We are located at uh, Escafan Mantem number no. 2, here in Takrade, uh, that is Bocadillo's building, the second and third floor. Okay, and your contact? Uh, my contact is 020-689-6321. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. So that is Dress Up GH, and um, we are still interacting with some of the in from SBTS. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, what's the name of your shop? Cello Collection. What? Cello Collection. And um, what happens here? We sell clothes. It's a unisex music. Okay. So where can you be located? We are at Bancha, say, um, GM Bank Road. Okay. And your contact? 0240 Okay. Thank you very much. So if you want to look glamorous, you want to come here and talk to them. We are also here. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. Okay. What's the name of your shop? Stuff of the Handiworks. Okay, what happens here? Oh, we do handworks like crocheting, crochet stuff, ribbons, earrings, everything. Okay. 
Even wall hangings. And see my little girl. Yes. Where can you be located? And not just next flats. Okay. And your contact? 0241 30 30 47. Okay. Thank you very much. So that's her right now. We will also try and talk to this lady here. How are you? Okay, um, he doesn't want to talk to us because she's making a lot of sales. We are here and we are talking with uh, SLR. So what's up? Yeah, we are cool. Okay, what happens here? Yeah, we do makeup and sell makeup products. We are on Instagram. Our name is SLR Makeup GH. Follow us on Instagram, SLR Makeup GH. Our phone number is 020-933-2077. Okay. We are at Amekom Traffic Light, Adechum Street. Thank you very much. So that's cone for you. And we also talk to her. Okay. How are you? I'm good. What's the name of your shop? Um, Abby's Hair. Okay. And what, what exactly happens? Okay, we basically deal in wigs, so it's wig making. So if you want a wig, you can get it from Abby's Hair. As well, people bring hairs for us to do for them as well. We do wig training as well for three months. So we sell very good quality hairs. So this is about Abby's Hair. And where can you be located? We can be located opposite Woodin at Market Circle. And we have another branch opposite Poly Campus at MTTU um, branch, yeah. Thank you very much. So if you want a good wig, you want to come around and do it. So we are here at Macnova. Yes. Okay, Macnova. Yes. So what happens here? Come again. What do you do? We sell ready to wear African dresses, uh, fitting skirts, straight dresses, flare dresses, long dresses, all type for all occasions. Okay. Um, where can you be located? Lagos Town, near yeah, Super Hideout Bakery. And my number is 0546 so if you want to look glamorous in an African way, you want to um, be come to Maknova. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. What's the name of your shop? Diaper City and Baby Essentials. I suppose you deal in all what I'm saying. All different brands of baby diapers and wipes and baby food. Where can you be located? I can be located at Abuaze. Abu Isi, close to the Assemblies of God Church. And um, your contact? 0264147654. Thank you very much. For, for, so for those of you who um, are give, have just given birth, you want to come and do business with the woman there. So we are here to at the Glamour and want to talk to you. Okay, um, how are you? I'm fine. What, what's the name of your shop? What's the name of, okay, well, she's not ready to talk to us, but, so we'll move on to the next person. Hello. Hi, yeah. How are you? Good. What, what's the name of your shop? Naki Ventures. Okay, what happens here? Well, we are a wholesale company. We deal in men's wear, women's wear, shoes. Okay. Everything. Where can you be located? We are at Kojo Chrome, adjacent Goldman Capital Bank. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we are still here at the Takrade um, shopping mall, and we are here. And this is the third edition of the trade fair. And if you want to buy, you can come around and look around. And I'm sure you have a thing or two. Eric Ewege, TV3, Takrade. So if you live in or around Takrade or even beyond but you're in the western region, do pass by the Takrade Mall because today is the last day for the fair. But we'll bring you some more as well in our subsequent bulletins. You're still watching Media Live and the Minister for Railways Development, Joe Gatti, says the ministry is ready for collaboration to develop the sector. He was speaking at the public lecture organized by the Second D Takrade Chamber of Commerce in Takrade. The Minister of Railways Development, Joe Gatti, explained that government and its development partners have commenced a program to develop infrastructure to revitalize the sector and called for collaboration with a view to take advantage of potential business opportunities. Get land, create an industrial park, service the plots and invite people to go there and then you'll be creating a new industrial hub. 
and not only the chamber of uh, the chamber of commerce, but anybody who is listening to me must realize that in the very near future, the land along the railway near the railway will become very valuable, and so uh, run and go and acquire some. The lecture was as a result of findings in their first quarter business condition survey. The report revealed that businesses are not being innovative. So we did this so that people will begin to know what opportunities exist elsewhere. And the minister did well by exposing the railway corridor and the economic opportunities within the railway corridor. So I personally believe that for our members who came here, and for the general public, they will start beginning to think about what to do within the area sector. And as we also take advantage of the minister's challenge to do this industrial park, I believe you'll see more businesses within Sekedi Takrade venturing to something in the railway sector. The lecture was on the theme, Railways Revitalization and Sustainable Development, Approaches and Opportunities in the Western Region. And tonight, this year's Ghana's most beautiful will Cutwalk with various designs um, from their designers as well, and we'll get ready for the glitz and glamour. It will be a hill and style affair when the ladies take the stage with their second performance to showcase their prowess on the runway. Having gone through non-stop rehearsals, the ladies are poised for what promises to be an exciting night of fashion, characterized with an array of music, dance and more. I can't be on heels, but I realized the first day, second day, the third day, I just realized it was fun. And today, I can boldly say that I love to catwalk and the show, dear. Yes. We have been rehearsing all night long for one week now, and tonight we are super ready. Choreographer Fred Nye, who has been taking the ladies through the grooming, says all is set for a good show tonight. Uh, in actual fact, we've just taken a week to prepare the ladies. Wearing shoes is a challenging for most of them, but um, we've been able to, to bring them to acceptable standard to, to put up um, a very nice show. Watch your favorite contestant, Don't Miss Ghana's Most Beautiful tonight. The Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts has declared September as a month of tourism. The move is to build interest of domestic tourism with the conservation of the country's historical and environmental heritage. On the 27th of September every year, the world celebrates the World Tourism Day. To mark this all-important day, the Ghana Tourism Authority, under the auspices of the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Creative Art, has rolled out a number of festivals and activities throughout the month of September. As part of efforts to highlight the importance of the sector, the Authority has declared September as a month of tourism. According to the Deputy Chief Executive of GTA, Echo Samson, this is to educate the indigenes and build the interest in domestic tourism. So World Tourism Day is celebrated in the month of September. Now we have extended it to cover the whole of the month. We are looking at all events that will happen within the month of September so that it doesn't become a one-day affair. Again, even this September month is not a limitation that because we have done our tourism in September, we are not going to promote tourism in October, November or December. It is the whole year through. The Ashanti region would pay host to this year's World Tourism Day celebrations in Ghana on September 27. <music> And that'll be all for this afternoon. I'm Wendy Lai. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of our programs. And News 360 is at 7. Do have a lovely Sunday afternoon.